Starship Mission to Mars Starship is a fully reusable spacecraft designed for missions to destinations like Mars and beyond. It's intended to be much larger and more powerful than any spacecraft currently in operation, with a focus on carrying a large number of passengers and cargo. Elon Musk's long-term vision for Starship is to enable the colonization of Mars. He envisions establishing a self-sustaining human presence on the Red Planet to ensure the survival of humanity beyond Earth. Starship is designed to carry both crew and cargo to Mars. The spacecraft is envisioned to carry up to 100 passengers or more, along with supplies and equipment, on missions to the Red Planet. As of 2022, SpaceX's timeline for Mars missions was somewhat fluid, but the company had previously stated its goal of sending uncrewed missions to Mars to establish infrastructure, followed by crewed missions. The timeline for these missions was optimistic, with initial crewed missions potentially happening in the 2020s, although delays are common in the aerospace industry. Worldview Space Balloon to offer commercial rides to Stratosphere for 50,000 euros. Arizona-based company Worldview develops a balloon-carried capsule for breathtaking voyages to the stratosphere. The first commercial rides aimed to start in 2024 with a cost of around 50,000 euros. Participants of all ages and physical conditions can enjoy this once-in-a-lifetime event above some of the most astonishing landmarks on the planet, the seven wonders of the World Stratospheric Edition as they call them. From this point, travelers can experience contrast, feeling the Earth's curvature and the total darkness of space. The voyage starts by visiting the site the flight will begin, spending some days with local guides exploring the history and the beauty of the area. When the capsule is raised, it reaches altitudes over 100,000 feet, immersing the passengers into mesmerizing views. After its first spaceport at the Grand Canyon, the following goals are the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, the Serengeti in Kenya, the Aurora Borealis in Norway, the Giza Pyramids in Egypt, Amazonia in Brazil, and the Great Wall of China in Mongolia. Stoke Space raises $100 million for reusable rocket development. Washington, Stoke Space, a startup that recently tested a prototype of the upper stage of a reusable rocket, has raised $100 million to continue development of that vehicle. The company announced the Series B round October 5th, tied to a presentation by the company's chief executive, Andy Lapsa, at a transportation conference in Dallas. The round was led by Industrious Ventures, a venture fund that has invested in a dozen other space companies, with participation by several new and existing investors. Stoke Space, based in the Seattle suburb of Kent, Washington, has now raised $175 million. The company did not disclose its valuation from the Series B round. This new round of funding is a huge vote of confidence in our team and the progress we've made, Lapsa said in a statement about the round. We will now continue moving through our development program by increasing focus on our reusable first stage. Space truck recoverable booster concept came long before SpaceX, it inflated to descend. In a very short period of time, humanity has gone from spending millions on single-use space launch vehicles to spending a lot less on missions that depend on reusable boosters. Made famous by SpaceX, this piece of tech is now at the center of most satellite launches, but also deliveries of supplies and astronauts to the International Space Station ISS. But SpaceX was not the first to think about reusable boosters. In fact, many working in the space exploration business in the 1960s toyed with the idea, but for various reasons, none of them came to be. Not even the insane one dreamed up by aerospace engineer Philip Bono and his team at the Douglas Aircraft Company. For this purpose Bono, who was responsible for birthing a lot more ideas, including that of a Saturn application single stage to orbit, SASTO, cooked up something called the reusable one-stage orbital space truck, Roost. 
Bringing Mars rocks to Earth could cost an astronomical $11 billion. NASA's Perseverance rover has collected valuable samples, but a new report says the plan to fetch them is unworkable. Humanity's biggest and most ambitious plan to search for extraterrestrial life is about to go back to the drawing board. NASA and the European Space Agency, ESA, have been working on a strategy to fly a set of Mars rocks, carefully collected by the Perseverance rover, back to Earth for study. But a new independent assessment of the plan says it can't be done on current budgets and schedules. The entire project will probably cost between 8 billion US dollars and 11 billion dollars, far more than the roughly 4 billion dollars estimated in a previous independent review report issued three years ago. And there's a near zero probability of the missions launching in 2027 and 2028 as the space agencies had hoped. Even pushing the launch dates out to 2030 would still cost between 8 billion US dollars and 9.6 billion dollars, the report estimates, comparable with the cost of building the James Webb Space Telescope, the single most expensive astronomy project in history. The Starraker was a single stage to orbit SSTO spacecraft concept proposed by Rockwell International in 1979. It was designed to take off and land like an airplane, using a combination of rocket engines and air breathing engines. The vehicle was intended to be capable of carrying large payloads, such as solar power satellites, into orbit. The Starraker would have taken off from a conventional runway and accelerated to supersonic speeds, at which point it would have transitioned to rocket propulsion for the final ascent into orbit. The spacecraft was designed to be reusable and capable of carrying a payload of up to 50,000 pounds, 22,680 kilograms, into low Earth orbit. The Starraker concept had the potential to revolutionize space travel by making it more affordable and accessible. The use of air breathing engines would have significantly reduced the amount of propellant required for launch, and the spacecraft's reusability would have further reduced costs. Additionally, the Starraker would have been able to take off from existing airports, eliminating the need for specialized launch facilities. China Space Station Fly Around the Tiangong Space Station, China's first permanent space station, is a sight to behold as it flies around Earth. Its distinctive shape and size make it easy to spot in the night sky, and its presence is a reminder of China's growing spacefaring capabilities. The Tiangong Space Station is made up of multiple modules that are connected together to form a large spacecraft. It is about the size of a football field and weighs over 200 tons. The station is equipped with a variety of scientific instruments and facilities, and it is used to conduct experiments in space biology, physics, and astronomy. The Tiangong Space Station is also a platform for international collaboration. Astronauts from China and other countries have visited the station to conduct research and participate in experiments. The station is expected to remain in orbit for at least 10 years, and it will continue to be a valuable tool for scientific research and exploration. The Hiller's Air Tug was a proposed heavy lift helicopter designed by Hiller Helicopters in the 1960s to recover the first stage of the Saturn V rocket midair. The Air Tug would have been the largest helicopter ever built, with a rotor diameter of 140 feet and a gross weight of 1 million pounds. It would have been powered by six Pratt and Whitney JT-8D turbofan engines. The Air Tug was designed to catch the first stage of the Saturn V rocket as it parachuted back to Earth after staging. The helicopter would have been equipped with a large scoop that would have captured the rocket stage and guided it into a cradle on the helicopter's fuselage. The helicopter would then have flown the rocket stage back to a launch site for refurbishment and reuse. The Hiller's Air Tug was a very large and complex helicopter, and it would have been very expensive to develop and build. 
However, the potential savings from recovering the first stage of the Saturn V rocket were so great that NASA was willing to invest in the project. A lenticular reentry vehicle, sometimes referred to as a lenticular shaped reentry vehicle, is indeed a concept that has been associated with the potential delivery of nuclear warheads. This design is intended to serve as a reentry vehicle for ballistic missiles, which could carry nuclear or conventional warheads. The lenticular shape, as previously mentioned, offers certain aerodynamic advantages for stability during reentry. During the Cold War, lenticular reentry vehicles were considered as one of the possible configurations for intercontinental ballistic missiles (ICBMs) by the United States and the Soviet Union. These missiles were an integral part of the nuclear deterrent strategy during that period. The lenticular shape provided more stable and controlled reentry compared to some other reentry vehicle designs. This stability is crucial for ensuring the accuracy of the delivery of a warhead to its intended target. Spacemaster is the wacky shuttle that might have been, CGI makes it fly for the first time. Although it was nothing more than a sort of commuter ride between the surface of our planet and low Earth orbit, meaning it didn't go to much more glorious places like the Moon or Mars, the Space Shuttle was one of the most successful spaceships ever constructed. Meant as a reusable, cheaper way to take astronauts to the International Space Station and to orbit, the Space Shuttle program ran from 1981 to 2011. It included five spaceships, Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, Endeavour, and Atlantis, which flew for a total of 134 times, completing 20,952 Earth orbits. In all, 848 people took to space on board of these ships, and they traveled for a combined 537 million, 864 million kilometers. The fleet of ships spent a total of 1,320 days beyond our planet's borders. The DARPA Star, Spaceplane Technology and Research, Space Cruiser was a proposed orbital spaceplane that was designed in the late 1980s as a small, reusable, and low-cost spacecraft for single-person missions. The crew compartment was unpressurized and only large enough for a seated astronaut, who would be required to remain in their spacesuit throughout the duration of the mission. The space plane also lacked many features found in other space vehicles, such as hydraulics, an ejection seat, or even landing gear. The space cruiser was a small spacecraft, only 8 meters in length and 1.5 meters tall at its aft end, tapering down to a fine point at its nose. It was designed to be transported into orbit by the space shuttle, and it could carry a payload of up to 2,500 pounds, 1,100 kilograms. Despite its simple design, the space cruiser was capable of a variety of missions. It could be used for satellite servicing, inspection, and repair. It could also be used for scientific research and exploration. The Hydrofoil Albatros rocket was a proposed Soviet two-stage to-orbit reusable launch system that was designed in the 1970s by Alexiev Design Bureau and Sukhoi. The system was based on the use of a hydrofoil to accelerate the first stage of the rocket to a high speed before it launched into orbit. The hydrofoil was a large, submerged barge that was designed to lift itself out of the water using its own propulsion system. This would reduce the drag on the first stage of the rocket and allow it to reach a speed of up to 1,100 miles per hour. Once the first stage reached this speed, it would detach from the hydrofoil and ignite its own engines to launch into orbit. The second stage of the rocket was a wing booster that was designed to carry the payload to a higher altitude before it separated from the payload and landed back on Earth. The payload would then use its own engines to reach orbit.
The Langley Research Center Unpressurized Crew Transport with Surface Habitat is a proposed lunar exploration vehicle that would be used to transport crew members and cargo to and from the lunar surface. The vehicle would consist of two main components, an unpressurized crew transport and a pressurized surface habitat. The unpressurized crew transport would be a modified version of the Orion spacecraft. It would have a capacity of four crew members and would be equipped with life support systems, propulsion systems, and navigation systems. The crew transport would also have a docking port that would allow it to dock with the surface habitat. The pressurized surface habitat would be a modular structure that could be assembled on the lunar surface. It would have a capacity of up to six crew members and would be equipped with living quarters, laboratories, and storage facilities. The surface habitat would also have a docking port that would allow it to dock with the unpressurized crew transport. 